Hi everyone, this is Mrs. J, and today we are going to be modeling with quadratic functions. Um, but first, please pause the video and give this warm up a try. Okay, so remember when we're checking to see if um, data is linear, first we are looking for a constant change in the x values. And once you see that, what we would be looking for is what's called a common difference. Are we adding or subtracting the same thing to get to the next y value? And here you can see that there is a common difference of negative four. So that means that we have a constant slope. The change of y over change of x is always the same. And anything with a constant slope would be classified as a linear function. So today we are going to be modeling with quadratic functions. So depending on the information that you have to work with, we would model our um, scenario with a different type or a different form of our quadratic function. So if the information that you're given gives you a vertex and then an additional point on your graph, we would want to use vertex form. So remember vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where hk is our vertex. Now let's say you're given both x-intercepts and an additional point. For this, we would want to use intercept form to model our equation, which is y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. Remember where p and q are your roots or your x-intercepts. Um, the third scenario would be that you just have three pieces of data or three points on your graph. This is going to be the trickiest one to do, but we would graph or we would model this with standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. However, for this process, since we are missing a, b, and c, we actually have to solve a system of three variables. So it's a little bit more tedious, but it's definitely doable. All right, let's take a look at this first example together. So this says the graph uh, shows the parabolic path of a performer who is shot out of a cannon, where y is the height in feet and x is the horizontal distance in feet traveled. The performer lands in a net 90 feet from the ca um, cannon. What is the height of that net? So essentially, we want to know what is the y value when x is 90, but we can't see that on our graph. So we need to create a model for this um, performer, for the height of the performer, and use that model to find that height. So look at the information that we are given. We have the vertex and an additional point. So we will be using vertex form to model this. So I'm going to start by substituting my vertex. Um, so y equals a times x minus 50 squared plus 35. But we still have that a value. So here we need to substitute that additional point we have, which in this case is 0, 15, to help us create our model. So we're going to temporarily substitute that point. So y equals 15, and then a times 0 minus 50 squared plus 35. Okay, negative 50 squared is positive 2,500. And now I just need to finish solving. So here, it's very common for when we're modeling, we're probably going to use our calculator and just get a decimal. Um, sometimes we'll have to round, sometimes it's an exact decimal. So we can use our calculator for this and get the decimal negative 0 0.008. So that means that our model is f of x equals negative 0 0.008 times x minus 50 squared plus 35. So now that we have a model for this scenario, we can answer the question. They're wondering what is the height of the net um, that is 90 feet horizontally from the cannon? So what we're really trying to find is f of 90. So I'm gonna substitute that into our equation. And then we'll just simplify and we can use our calculator to help us here. 
So there we have 40 squared, which is 1,600. So f of 90 is 22.2. So we'll always want to make sure we include units in our final answer whenever we have any type of word problem. So the height of the net is 22.2 feet. So you can see here that being able to model a quadratic scenario allows us to um, maybe make predictions about future events or find values that we can't clearly see in our graph. Okay, I have one for you to try on your own, so please pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Since we were given the vertex and additional point, I use that vertex form again. Here is the model um, that I used to um, answer the question, which is what is the y value when the x value is 60? Okay, let's try another one together. So this says a meteorologist creates a parabola to predict the temperature tomorrow where X is the number of hours after midnight and Y is the temperature in degrees Celsius. Write a function that models the temperature over time and then find what the coldest temperature is. Um, so we're gonna be essentially finding the Y value of that vertex. So here you can see that we are given two X intercepts of four and 24. And we are given an additional point 0 and 9.6. You won't always be given the y-intercept, but in this case we are. So based on the information we're given, I am going to use that intercept form to model this scenario. So y equals a times x minus 4 times x minus 24. And then we're going to substitute the point 0, 9.6 to help us solve for a. So we have 9.6 equals a times 0 minus 4 times 0 minus 24. 9.6 equals 96a. So our a value is 0 0.1. So the model that we can use is f of x equals 0 0.1 times x minus 4 times x minus 24. So it's actually part of our answer. They did ask us to find a model. And then we wanna know what is the coldest temperature. So here, we are trying to find the Y value of the vertex. So to find the Y value of the vertex, first, we need to find the X value. So we know that from intercept form, the X value of our vertex is going to be exactly halfway between my intercepts. So if you add them up, and divide by two, I see that the x value of my vertex is going to be at 14. And then I can plug that back into my function to find the y value of the vertex, which should be my answer. So here we have 0 0.1 times 10 times negative 10. So that y value of my vertex is negative 10. So now we need to make sure we give a thorough answer with units. So they ask, what is the coldest temperature? Negative 10 degrees Celsius. And there you go. Okay, so here I have one for you to try on your own. So please pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so again, we're given the x-intercepts and a point. Um, so I use the intercept form to create this function, 0 0.05 times x minus 6 times x minus 21. And then from there, if they want the coldest temperature, they're asking for the y value of the vertex. So I started by finding the, f, the x value of the vertex, which was 13.5, and then you can plug that in to find the y value. So you should get negative 2.8125 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to always include units in your final answer. So now we're gonna talk about how to um, model a quadratic equation when we're just given a set of data. 
So first we have to know how to recognize if the data is quadratic. So what we're looking for here is instead of a common difference, like with a linear function, we're looking for what's called a common second difference, or, what, or sometimes it's called a common difference of differences. So first, you still need to have equally spaced x values. And then if you do, check for a pattern with your y values. So if you look at this example, I do my initial pattern, I see we have negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. So here, I know this is not a linear equation because the, the, um, there's no common difference. But then I look to see if there's a pattern between those differences. And I see, oh, from negative 3 to negative 5, I add 2. Here to here, I add 2 again, and again, and again, and again. So this is what's called a common second difference. So when you have a scenario like this, um, this tells you that the data is quadratic. All right, let's give this last one a try together. So it says NASA can create a weightless environment by flying a plane in a parabolic path. The table shows the height um, in feet of a plane T seconds after starting the flight path. After about 20.8 seconds, passengers begin to experience a weightless environment. Write and evaluate a function to approximate the height at which this occurs. So we need the, uh, the y value when our x value is 20.8. So first we're going to need to look at our data and make sure that it's actually quadratic. So here we do see that we have that common difference in x values. It's always plus 5. So that's an important thing to look for first. This does need to be a constant um, difference. And now let's look for the change in our y values. So from here to here, we can see that we're adding 2125, 1575, 1025. And again, you can take any value and subtract the one before to find that difference. Um, here is 475, and then negative 75 and then negative uh, 625. So we can see that there's definitely not a common first difference. This is definitely not a linear set of data. But then I'm going to check to see if there's some pattern in those differences. So I'm going to check for a second difference. So I see that from here to here, I'm actually subtracting 550. From here, I'm subtracting 550. And it's the same again and again and again. So again here, since we have that common second difference, we know that this is quadratic data. So once we have that quadratic data, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, to model our data. But we need to find a, b, and c. Those are three variables we need to solve for, which means we need to use three equations to do that. This is a system of three variables. So when we're doing this, we're going to look at our data and we're just going to pick three coordinates to work with. So I'm just going to use um, this first coordinate and I'll use the third one and I'll use the fifth one. Again, any three should give you the same answer. Those are the three that I'm going to use. So I'm going to substitute those values for x and y to create my equations. So again, my y value here um, is uh, 26,900. So I have 26,900 equals a times my x value squared. And um, 10 squared is 100. So I have 100a plus um, b times my x value. So plus 10b plus c. So here you can see I have one equation that has three variables, but now I need two more to solve. So then for my second coordinate, my y value is 30,600. And then here I have my x value squared, so 400a, and then my x, um, my x value times b, so plus 20b, and then just plus c. So there's my second equation. And then my third equation would be 32,100 
equals 900a, which is my x value squared, plus my x value times b, so 30b plus c. So again, I kind of arbitrarily chose those three coordinates, but any three should give you the same result at the end. So now we have a system, um, so now we need to solve this system. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to try to eliminate my c values twice. So I'm actually going to do equation 2 here. So 30,600 equals 400a plus 20b plus c. And then I'm going to do the opposite of equation 1 to make my c value negative. Remember, this is how I'd like to show your work when you have a system. So negative 26,900 equals negative 100a minus 10b minus c. And then I can add vertically to eliminate my c's. And I get 3,700 equals 300a plus 10b. And then I'm going to do um, equation 3 and equation 1. Oh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to call this equation 4, since it's a new equation I'm going to be working with. Okay, now I'm going to take equation 3. I need to eliminate my C's again. And then I'm going to do the opposite of equation 1. So negative 26,900 equals negative 100A minus 10B minus C. And I get 5,200 equals 800A plus 20B. And I'm going to call that equation 5. So I'm almost there. Um, here I see that I can eliminate um, my B values. So I'm going to do equation 5. And I know this is a little bit tedious, but we're almost there. And then I need to make this negative 20. So I'm going to multiply equation 4 by negative 2. So negative 2 times equation 4. So I get negative 7400 um, equals negative 600a minus 20b. So negative 2200 equals 200a. So here I can see that a equals negative 11. And then I just start back substituting. Um, so let's substitute that. A equals negative 11. Into, let's substitute it into equation 4. So 3700 equals three, 300 times negative 11 plus 10B. Then we can solve for B. So 10B equals 7,000, so B equals 700. And then from here we can substitute those two values. Um, I'm going to substitute A equals negative 11 and B equals 700 into any of our original three. I'll just substitute it into equation 1. So 26,900 equals 100 times negative 11 plus 10 times 700 plus C. So here I just combined like terms and we get C equals 21,000. So again, I know this is a lot of work. This is the only one that we're going to do like this today, so don't worry. Um, so now that I have A, B, and C, I can actually make my function. So f of x, or maybe I should use the right variables. Let's do 
h of t equals negative 11 t squared plus 700 t plus 21,000. So this is the quadratic function that models that flight path. And then we can use that function to answer the question, which is what is the height um, after 20.8 seconds when that weightlessness occurs? So we're essentially finding h of 20.8. So I'm just substituting that into our function. And then we can use our calculator to give us um, an approximation for this. So we get h of 20.8 is 30,800.96. So we could say that this occurs at 30,800.96 feet. All right, and again, I know that was a super tedious problem. Um, but it was definitely a good review on how to solve a system of three variables. Um, but that is the last example for today. Um, so we're all set, and thank you so much for watching.